Welcome to this webinar titled Simplify Process Characterization by Combining Thermal Data with In Situ Mid IR Spectroscopy. Developing a better synthetic route or chemical process faster with less effort is a goal that we all share. The chemists and engineers that we work with around the world in the chemical and pharmaceutical industries and also in academia have told us that this is their desire. We work with scientists as they try to leverage the use of modern lab instruments like automated lab reactors and real-time analytics to develop greener synthetic routes, more reliable and efficient chemical processes, and safer scale-up conditions. I would like to illustrate how the combination of thermal data from the EasyMax and in situ mid infrared data from the React IR can help to achieve these objectives and bring products to market faster. I will use three case studies a Friedel Crafts reaction, monitoring the supersaturation of a crystallization, and the acetylation of aniline. As you move up in scale, you need to rely more on technology to provide detailed knowledge of reaction component composition and to gauge the impact reaction variables have on reaction performance such as mixing and to determine reaction thermodynamics. Also, if you end with a crystallization, you need the tools to make crystallization a science-based process more than just based on historical procedure. As the amount of information increases, visualization and interpretation software tools to mine the data become critical in the conversion of that data to actionable information. Mettler Toledo's IC software suite was designed from the ground up starting in 2005 to be a complete process development software solution with one common interface that allows not only seamless integration of data but also full interoperability between instruments. Technologies can now communicate to one another and share information across technology platforms in real time via a direct connection or even across a corporate intranet. There are many compelling reasons to use automated lab reactors in combination with in situ mid infrared analytics. The most compelling are that the synergy of combining the technologies results in a more thorough understanding of your chemistry and chemical processes and an improvement in productivity which directly results in the reduction of the amount of time it takes to complete projects and get products to manufacturing. Being able to accurately and reproducibly control reaction variables while at the same time monitoring the impact that those changes have on reaction performance is a rapid way to identify critical process parameters. Real-time in situ analysis eliminates the errors that sometimes occur with offline analysis, which many times results in the loss of valuable time due to misinformation. Lastly, using software specifically designed for reaction control and in situ analytics results in the automatic capture of critical data, which can not only provide a wealth of information, but also facilitates adherence to regulatory requirements such as CGMP and the FDA's 21 CFR Part 11. I won't go into a lot of product detail as that information is readily available in product data sheets which can be downloaded from the MP.com website. Instead, I will focus on a few applications to illustrate the value of the combined technology platform that I like to refer to as the Process Development Workstation. Briefly, however, it consists of an EasyMax 102 and a React IR 45M equipped with a multiplex IR interface. The EasyMax has a touchpad which allows full control of all process variables and the data can be downloaded onto a flash drive via a USB port on the front of the instrument. 
Alternatively, you can use eye control software for EasyMax, which allows operation via a PC. The React IR45M has two silver halide fiber conduit probe assemblies, one of each inserted into the EasyMax vessels. The React IR is operated using ICIR software. Again, as I mentioned earlier, all of the IC applications share a common user interface, which you can see in these two startup screens here. This improves productivity by reducing the amount of training required to become proficient with the software tools. The first case study is a Friedel Crafts acylation. In this example, methoxynaphthalene is added to toluene at zero degrees Celsius. The speed on the overhead mechanical stirrer is set to 400 RPM, and after the temperature is stabilized, aluminum chloride is manually added. Once again, the temperature is allowed to stabilize, and then an acid chloride is added using a dropping funnel. One thing I want to bring to your attention is the EasyMax's capability to rapidly change temperature without the use of a cryostat. In this case, using tap water with a temperature of 17 degrees, the temperature of the toluene was lowered from an ambient temperature of about 23 degrees to zero in just under 10 minutes. This was accomplished using EasyMax's integrated thermoelectric cooling capability. As reagents are added, the temperature of the reaction mass is well maintained. The temperature of the reactor jacket immediately responds by lowering to just under minus 12 degrees after the addition of the aluminum chloride. This allows a less than one degree change in the temperature of the reaction mass. Here we can see the heat flow from the addition of the acid chloride by calculating the difference between the temperature of the reaction mass, TR, and the temperature of the jacket, TJ. A heat flow of 10 degrees Kelvin equates to a reaction heat of greater than 150 watts per liter. If this reaction was run in a vessel where the jacket temperature was simply held constant, this heat would accumulate in the reactor, causing the temperature of the reaction mass to rise significantly. This is certainly a safety concern, but can also impact the yield and impurity profile. As we have been collecting real-time in-situ mid-infrared data using the REACT IR, we can now take a look at how the molecules are behaving. Here we see part of the mid-infrared spectrum, where spectra have been collected automatically as a function of time. In this case, we collected the solvent, toluene, as a reference spectra, and then use an automatic solvent subtraction algorithm to remove the spectral contribution of the solvent which is why in the first three spectrum you simply see a flat line. We can now see distinct absorbances for each of the reactive species, substrate, intermediate, and product. We can now monitor the changes in concentration for these components. We can bring these infrared trends into eye control software and view them along with the EasyMax trends to get a complete and thorough understanding of the reaction dynamics. While TR minus TJ indicates the exotherm of the reaction, the specificity of the mid-infrared spectrum shows us the species that were formed with each step. The concert algorithm was used to automatically deconvolve the data to provide these concentration profiles. Along with these profiles, concert also provides mathematically calculated pure component spectra which can be used to confirm the structure of the intermediate species. This information is typically used to understand reaction mechanism and pathway. The profiles can be used to calculate the kinetics. The second case study involves the combination of EasyMax and React AR to quantitatively monitor supersaturation during a crystallization. 
providing critical solubility and metastable zone width information early on in process development and on a small scale can be very beneficial as the process is scaled up and moved to manufacturing. Incremental amounts of paracetamol were added to 100 mils of water in an EasyMax vessel. The solubility curve was available from the literature, so the amounts added were chosen based on the reported solubility. For each concentration, spectra were recorded at two temperatures 10 degrees apart. This is so that the temperature effect on the spectra could be taken into account during the development of the quantitative model. The green curve here represents the weight-based paracetamol concentration. You can see the four steps for each of the four concentrations. The blue curve represents the temperature of the water. As we took two spectra for each concentration at different temperatures, we have eight data points in total. At the lower right, you can see the table in ICIR populated as referee data. We can do this in real time very quickly and then import the referee spectra and associated quantitative information directly into ICQuant in order to build the quantitative model. To build a multivariate partial least squares quantitative model, we start by simply importing the data from the experiment file, which brings over all the spectra and associated quantitative data. On the left, at 1, we select the trends that we want to import. In this case, we selected not only the concentration of paracetamol, but also the temperature from the EasyMax as a second independent variable. At 2, we have selected all of the spectra to be imported. After the data is imported at 3, we can choose for each data point whether we want to use it as part of the calibration set, the test set, or whether it should be ignored. Then we choose the spectral region over which the model will be applied. Lastly, we click on the calibration button for the goodness of the model can be checked via a number of diagnostic tests, five, and the model can be interactively refined to see if any improvements can be made. Now we are ready to run our crystallization and test our model. A 3.8% solution of paracetamol in water was cooled from 55 degrees to 20 degrees at a rate of 1 degree per minute. The calibration model was loaded and the absolute concentration of paracetamol was monitored as a function of temperature. At 1 we select the model and load it into the quantitative analysis pane of the toolbox on the right. 2 indicates the visualization of temperature versus concentration in the trends view in ICIR. I want to point out that in the earlier experiment we were visualizing ICIR trends within iControl software. In this case we are looking at our trends from the EasyMax within ICIR software. This functionality is completely bidirectional and trends can be simply dragged and dropped between IC Suite applications or they can be imported by clicking on the appropriate icon or menu item. Lastly, at 3, we can see that the data can be copied to the clipboard and then exported to Excel or any other software. Once we have the data in Excel, we can calculate the degree of supersaturation quantitatively because we have the solubility curve. Note that while we used a solubility curve from literature, solubility and metastable zone width can also be determined automatically using EasyMax and ReactIR or FBRM. One indicates the start of cooling. Two shows that while cooling is taking place, the concentration of paracetamol remains constant, but the green curve on the lower right shows that supersaturation is increasing until the onset of nucleation 3. 
where both concentration and supersaturation decrease until desupersaturation is complete. 4. Cooling continues and paracetamol continues to crystallize from solution until the endpoint is reached. 5. The last case study is the acetylation of aniline. I wanted to run these experiments in order to collect data for a kinetics analysis. This procedure comes compliments of Professor John Soa at Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey, USA, who presented a very interesting kinetics analysis of this reaction at the 2008 ACS Mid-Atlantic Regional Meeting. The picture here is the actual setup that I use. On the left, outside of this picture, is a single PC with eye control for EasyMax and ICIR controlling the instrumentation. Inserted into each of EasyMax's two vessels is a probe from a React IR45M equipped with a multiplexer. Then 50 mils of dichloromethane was added. Stirring was set to 200 RPM for each vessel. Using the touchpad in front of the EasyMax, I set the temperature of vessel 1 to 0 degrees and the temperature of vessel 2 to minus 10 degrees. After the temperature stabilized, I added acetic anhydride. Again, I allowed the temperature to stabilize and then added aniline in one shot using a syringe. The infrared spectra with the solvent DCM subtracted show peaks for all of the reactive species. We can profile these peaks to get concentration trends. In this example, I use concentrations of 100 millimolar for both the anhydride and aniline. Knowing the starting concentration of aniline, we now have the information we need to start a kinetics analysis. Again, for a complete picture of the reaction, we can overlay the information from the EasyMax with the information from the React IR. While the EasyMax provides the overall picture of the thermal events, the infrared information provides the specificity to tell us what contributed to those thermal events. The experiment was conducted three more times in the afternoon, as each experiment is actually two reactions at different temperatures, 0 and minus 10. This represents six experiments. Each set of experiments had different concentrations of reagents, two with the same excess and one with a different excess. I ran these experiments so that I could use this data to evaluate the kinetics using the Reaction Progress Kinetics Analysis, or RPKA, of Donna Blackman. ICIR allows you to move the reference position for each of the sets of trends, so I did my best here to adjust the reference point to be the addition of aniline for each reaction. This reaction occurs so quickly that it's hard to get the visualization correct, but you can see that the rates are different, with the red curve being the reaction at minus 10 degrees and the lowest concentrations, the green curve being the reaction at 0 degrees at those same concentrations, and so on. In any case, we can export this data to Excel or to our upcoming IC Kinetic software to calculate the rate equations.